Hello again to another Maple 15 screencast. In this screencast, we're going to talk about equations, how to enter them and how to solve them. To enter in an equation, just type it as you normally would, especially including the equal sign and the expressions on both sides of it. For example, here's a simple linear equation. Once it's entered, to solve it, just right-click on it or control-click on it if you're using a Mac. This will bring up a context menu, and one of the options is Solve. If you mouse over the Solve option, there's another menu with several solving options. Let's choose Solve, and Maple returns an exact solution for the equation. Maple will also solve more complicated, non-algebraic equations like this one. Again, enter it, right-click and select Solve, then Solve again, and Maple produces an exact result. For cases where an equation has no real solution, like this one, selecting Solve will produce complex number solutions if it has any. If Maple cannot find any solutions, either real or complex, then an empty list will be produced. Here's an equation that, from our knowledge of trigonometry, we know has infinitely many solutions. If you select Solve, Maple will give the one solution between 0 and 2 pi. To get an expression that describes all possible solutions, select Solve, and then Solve General Solution. The output here means that the solution is pi plus 2 pi times an integer. That's what the z means. So for example, the solutions here are pi, 3 pi, 5 pi, and so on, and also pi, negative 3 pi, and so on. Here's a polynomial equation that, since it's cubic, should have at least one solution, but there's no simple formula for finding it. If we use maple to find it, we get a ridiculously long exact solution for it. This isn't really practical if we're trying to know what the solution is. Instead, we might want to find a numerical, non-exact, approximate solution. To do this, select Solve, and then Numerically Solve, and Maple produces decimal approximations to the solutions. Checking this with a graph can help us make sure the solutions make sense. Here, I can see that the roots of the polynomial do indeed seem to be approximately what Maple says they are. Let's have a look at a fairly complicated trig equation like this. Let's graph the left-hand side first to get an idea of what the solution to this equation should be, or even if there is one. From the plot, we can see that this expression equals 3 halves infinitely many times. Going back to the equation, an exact solve command won't be very useful. A numerical solve command will give us the smallest positive solution. But what if I wanted to know approximately what the solution is here, closer to 2 times pi? Maple will allow you to choose a starting point for the numerical solution so that you can target a solution you want. The solution I'm looking for is close to 2 pi, which is approximately 6. So I'll enter that into the blank and click OK, and I get the solution I'm interested in. You can also solve equations from the command line without context menus. For example, to solve the cubic we saw earlier, use the solve command. Type in solve, open parentheses, then the equation, then comma, then the variable to solve for, then close parentheses and hit enter. A numerical solution can also be done from the command line using fsolve. It uses the same syntax as solve. Finally, Maple can also solve an equation for a particular variable if more than one variable is involved. For example, here's the formula for the volume of a sphere. To solve this equation for R, just right-click, select Solve, then Solve for Variable, and then the variable you want to solve for, and Maple does the rest. Maple has lots more options for solving equations, so take some time to play and search around the help documentation. Thanks for watching.